For centuries, queer and trans folks had been ostracized and othered, scapegoated and exploited, harassed and harmed like it was going out of style. But in 1969, at a rundown, banged up bar on Christopher Street, our pent up anger boiled over into outrage. We came together in a spontaneous uprising to say no to the bull <laughs> This time was different, and we knew it. I'm talking about the Stonewall Riots, baby. Ever heard of them? It was a clash of epic proportions with hundreds of participants. We're gonna meet just three of the icons who were in the eye of the storm. But first, how did this shady little hideaway become synonymous with queer liberation? What led up to this explosive turning point? And what the hell was the Stonewall in? Friday, June 27, 1969. Oh, don't you wish we could get married? It'll never happen. No. It'll never happen. God, Richard just walked in. You know, I heard he got married. I could tell you're already my type of chick. Yeah? Do you want to move in together? Why should we need another drink? Yeah, the first one tasted awful. Yeah, it was horrible. There we were, enjoying Ooh. our usual overpriced and watered-down drinks. I hate to say it, but the Stonewall Inn was gross. <laughs> but what other choice did we have? Allow me to explain. Welcome to the footnotes. <laughs> when Prohibition ended in 1933, the New York State Liquor Authority deemed it illegal for establishments selling alcohol to employ or serve queer folks. That's right, no vodka sodas ever. So we had to carve out our own spaces or just take the best we could get. And in 1960s New York, the best we could get was often a bar run by the mafia. These establishments would jack up their prices knowing that their queer clientele had few other options. The bars were unsanitary and the drinks were watered down and sometimes they blackmail closeted folks who came through their doors. They got away with it by paying off the police. By 1969, activists were fed up with bars like the Stonewall. They were fed up with the corrupt police who allowed the mafia to extort them. And they were fed up with politicians who allowed it all. They were ready to fight back. I asked for a dirty martini, not a dirty martini, but I'll drink it. Visiting the bar that night in all their butch glory was our first hero, the legendary Stormy De Larvier. Quite the name, no? I was serving Ellen before Ellen. Stormy was a suit-wearing, no bull big-hearted lesbian who was used to living on the margins of society. Born in 1920 in New Orleans to a black mother and a white father, Stormy had a rough childhood. Interracial marriage was against the law. They were often bullied for, in their own words, being Negro with a white face. I wouldn't hurt a fly, but I cut a homophobe. Stormy had a masculine persona, but was assigned female at birth. I'm Susan Stryker. My pronouns are she, her, and the sheets, they, them, and the streets. And I'm a historian, filmmaker, and gender studies professor. Stormy is somebody who, you know, I would call a butch. I mean, they did not deny that they were assigned female at birth. They weren't trying to pass full time as a man, but they were very open about their masculine presentation. The strange thing is I never moved any different than I had when I was wearing women's clothes. But they only saw what they wanted to see. They believed what they wanted to believe. Can I get a drink? and they made a living with it. It's like they were an entertainer. There was a famous drag show review called the Jewel Box Review. Everybody in the show was assigned male at birth doing femme drag on stage, and Stormy, who was the quote unquote one woman, was the MC or the tuxedo. While many of their colleagues only dressed opposite their assigned gender on stage, Stormy served butch realness on the streets. They'd walk around in a suit and set a trend. I was doing it, then all the other lesbians started doing it. 
<laughs> Bitch, I'm an influencer. Hey. So their Stormy was that night. Cruising and boozing and minding their business. Ugh. I love vaginas. I was just thinking. I was just that. thinking, when were we gonna go have some lady sex? Yes. Something ain't right about them. Nearby were a pair of nondescript lesbians. Joe, look at my woman! Yeah, this is my my man lady. Suddenly, the music stopped. An offensively bright light filled the bar. The sign that a police raid was imminent. The two women at the bar were undercover cops. The cops started arresting trans and gender non-conforming patrons. 1.15 a.m., the morning of Saturday, June 28th. It was every cop's dream, like free donuts or no body cams. The police targeted a butch who was, according to many historians, Stormy de Larvier. They resisted. And one witness even wrote, A dyke lost her mind on the streets of the West Village, kicking, cursing, screaming, and fighting. Get off of me! Mama was ready to end the mother All of a sudden, the cop strikes at Stormy. They bashed the wrong butch. Ugh. He hit me, so I hit him back. It was the punch heard around the world, or at least around the rest of the bar. Stormy cried out. Why don't you guys do something? It was a rallying cry, and we rallied hard. The revolution had begun.